really been in love with the new makeup launches recently, so I've had to like actually think about what fun content I want to do with like what I already had. So I was like, mm. you know what? It's been a long time since I've done a full face of drugstore makeup. I would say when it comes to long form videos, I mostly cover my high end makeup. But you guys know I love all realms of makeup and actually in my shorter form videos I would say I have a larger audience that wants to know about the drugstore makeup so I want to test a variety of different affordable makeup items to have for those short form audience or drugstore loving audiences so today in this long form video we're going to change it up a bit and I'm going to do a full face of drugstore makeup that's new to me. A lot of this isn't new to the market per se, but I have back here a bin of drugstore products that I haven't yet used, so I took the opportunity to dig into that. So, uh, come here. So let's start off with prepping our face. I Would you consider Pacifica a affordable slash drugstore makeup brand? They're kind of that in between. We'll count it as affordable. So this is the Pacifica Volume Off. Very rude. Pacifica Vegan Collagen Skin Solve Prime Blur and Hydrate. So this is like a do it all. I like priming with blurring and hydrating stuff. I haven't used Pacifica on my channel too much. I'm gonna go minimally because I do have another base product that I wanna try, but I wanna feel the consistency of this. It's quite thin. Ooh, it's almost like slippery, like my hands are sliding around so easily. I'm keeping this mostly where my skin gets dry. I don't want to apply too much because you'll see what I'm using next. I'm almost using like two bases today before I even get to foundation. But this is leaving behind a nice hydrating feel. Smoothing slash blurring. It's definitely not blurring, so... I would say, for me, I'm not seeing that, but it feels nice. It has a slight scent to it, which I don't really like. It's not like sweet or anything. I think it's just the scent of the product. <laughs> I don't know, it's fine. It, it left a little bit of a hydrating feel. It's not deeply hydrating by any means. It's I, right, but I'll continue to test that. This next product, super duper viral and popular. I bought this myself a while back and I never used it. So I'm finally gonna use this L'Oreal Lumi Lotion. I got mine in the shade Light and I don't even know where I want to begin with this. So it looks like this and I just see people using it almost as like a Charlotte Tilbury flawless finish dupe. Ooh, and I went pretty minimal. I spread it out. I didn't want to put too much on because honestly, I don't want my makeup to look heavy or anything today. But that did leave behind a very glowy, pretty finish. I mean, this has been around for a couple of years now. It's, this is nothing new or profound. I'm very late to the game on this. But actually, that does leave behind a pretty glow. I saw that this looks really nice on the body. And the first time I saw this, uh, when I used to do bridal makeup, one of the people that I would work with, she would use this on her clients. And she was ahead of the game because this is very pretty for bridal. It's not too overwhelming. I think this would be really pretty for bridal, like on the chest and down the arms and stuff. Okay, I like that. And it's not too heavy feeling. I was worried it would feel heavy. So far, it's not <laughs> super late, but wow. And then I also have from L'Oreal. They sent these recently, and these were also quite popular, and I'd never gotten a chance to try. True Match Nude Hyaluronic Tinted Serums. I've actually had a couple requests to cover this, so it's a little late, but here they are. Thinking I'm definitely light medium. I have a Neutrogena product that works exactly like this, I think. And I love it. So this pumper thing is kind of a joke. What the heck? Ooh, I'm making a mess. Okay. Okay. Ooh, it's very thin. I did not expect to get a lot of coverage from this. I'm just putting it on the back of my hand because the packaging, I feel like, is kind of faulty. I'm just going to use my fingers to spread that out. It does feel very nice and thin, which is really great for this time of year. It depends though, because this could be really great in the winter time to add some hydration to the skin when the skin is at its driest. 
but it also can be good for summer because it feels much more lightweight. And when you're hot and sweaty, you don't want anything that's going to weigh down on your face. That's really pretty. It is a lighter coverage. I'm gonna do my forehead next, and then we'll do a side-by-side -side look. It's not super glowy either. It actually tamed down the glotion. So that's the side done. It looks pretty. It has a light coverage, but I feel like it did give a better look to my skin. Not a hot take. A lot of people have said this. I am not the person to discover this, but so far this looks beautiful. I just tried a product that's similar to this from Danessa Myricks, kind of, because Danessa Myricks just launched a skin tint, and I thought that that one was beautiful. I wonder how these two would compare. I'll have to do a side-by-side. -side. I just, I haven't worn the Danessa Myricks enough yet to be able to compare it to other products. I don't know its behavior well enough, but I do like the method that I'm using to apply where I spread it out with my finger and then I use a sponge. I think this shade is a little pink on me. That's what I find a lot with drugstore products. The undertones are always a lie. Like, I would say I have a neutral undertone and they often oxidize and then just always look a little bit pink or warm. But this looks gorgeous. It doesn't go up to like a true medium coverage, but like I feel like where I built it up on the cheeks, we did get like a lighter side of medium coverage, not quite reaching truly medium, but that looks beautiful. Ew, I already made the top look disgusting with my foundation fingers, but it doesn't do any like blurring of the pores or anything, but it still is sitting really nice on the skin. I think I would prefer it without adding that second layer because I do feel like the second layer took away a little bit of that natural finish but that's nice, that's a good one from the drugstore. And then for concealer, I'm going to use this from Catrice. Catrice has some major hits. This is the Under Eye Brightener Instant Awake in Light Rose. I have oddly been into color correctors lately. I feel like, I guess I'm getting older now that I'm 27, but <laughs> the inside part of my eye is more blue than it ever was. I never really cared for discoloration on me. I never thought I needed too much work to cover it. And it's not bad, but for the first time in my life, I really do feel like I need a little bit of that brightening. And this is a nice consistency. It's not too sticky. It warms up to the touch of my finger. It's nice. And it doesn't look too heavy on the under eyes as well. It applied really nice with that rare beauty concealer brush hmm. and then it's giving a little bit of bounce back which is pretty i uh, do not have a new concealer from the drugstore so i'm just gonna mix the physician's formula butter glow which is really natural with a little bit of the catrice true skin for a little additional coverage i'm also gonna set with a random translucent powder that's closest to me while I was off camera, I also filled in my eyebrows and I used a translucent powder to set my under eyes, but uh, it's going to be a powder heavy day. Starting off with these Physicians Formula Butter Glow Press Primer. So these, be what? Butter Glow Pressed Powders. So these are supposed to be like a radiance boosting glow. So that's why I did use translucent powder because it does have a glowy radiant lip from within purpose. There are two different shades. I'm going to start off with Translucent Glow here and it has that pretty marbling on there. Uh, I just want to see what it does. So I'm going to have a lot of powder on my face at the end of this, which is fine, but it can make the foundation look a little heavier than it is. You know what? As I'm looking at this, it's not too glowy, which is what I was hoping would happen. I think the radiance was very, very subtle. Hardly noticeable. It doesn't look glittery where I applied it. Mm, I'm like trying to look on my finger. Yeah, it, I don't see any glitter, glitter particles, but there is a subtle radiance. It's not anything like the Hourglass, but I feel like they're trying, that's the goal. Right, so I'm gonna continue using this as I added a second layer. I definitely see more of that bounce back. So actually I really like this because this is a radiance powder that's not too radiant 
or highlighty. I, I'm gonna have to use this some more, but I feel like this could be a drugstore alternative. Not dupe, alternative. They also have another shade in Natural Glow. I'm gonna see if I can do this kind of like maybe a bronzer or something to blend out bronzer or maybe to set powder bronzer depending on how this looks on me. Yeah, on me you can see that has more of a bronzery finish but it's obviously made for a deeper complexion but you can kind of see more of the finish when I apply it this way and it does have that radiance because you can see it bouncing off <laughs> my texture which is not a bad thing because I feel like if you do a lighter layer it's okay and whatever if you have texture sometimes it is what it is I get it there's occasions where we don't want our texture showing you know if you are having a bad skin day or maybe you're going through an acne fit I've had plenty of those I wouldn't use this powder but you know for little milk bumps and stuff don't worry about it too much don't overthink it actually that's really pretty as the bronzer where I went a little too heavy because I didn't know if it would be pigmented it's a little red <laughs> but Ooh, that worked really nice as a bronzer. That's actually very pretty. It has a nice toasted look. I did pull an actual bronzer though, also from Physicians Formula. So I've used this before. This is the Butter Bronzer. They sent me a new one recently and my other one is old. So I'm going to replace that with this one. This comes in like new eco-friendly packaging. Oh, plantable. There is a seed paper inside this. I do not have a green thumb though, so I will just probably be recycling this. Oh my gosh, it, it tells you what to do to grow something. <laughs> How fun. Anyways, um, but I think I saw this was Sophia Richie's favorite bronzer recently. I love learning about celebrity favorite makeup, and this is a good one. I'm just going to play a little bit because the Butter Glow powder did a great job already, but this has more of a neutral finish. I pulled it out, I'm being stubborn, I'm using it right now, but I don't really need to layer it like this, but this is beautiful. It's a great option from the drugstore. It's a bit expensive for the drugstore, but still very nice. Now I have a fresh one. And then the last product before it's setting spray for the complexion is blush. I'm actually gonna hold off though. I wanna see what I do with my eye look so I can put a blush that matches. So we'll come back to that. I did put a ColourPop brow pencil in my eyebrows, but you know how I am with these brow gels right now? I'm addicted to trying all of them. I'm addicted, addicted, addicted. So this is the Catrice Brow Fix Shaping Wax. Have yet to try this. Oh, it looks like a soapy. And then they also sent along this nice little uh, spoolie wooly that I'm gonna put through my brows. I mean, so far Catrice, I am enjoying your under eye brightener, so I'm picky when it comes to products like this though. Oh, it's not as hard as I thought. Should I have read instructions? I trimmed my brows, so they're not gonna look as spidery as they've been looking. It feels a little light. I don't know how much hold it's going to have. I could trim out here a little bit, huh? Okay, and then... I like this spoolie though. I like how it's separating the brows. Then I'm gonna press. Honestly, I just prefer pressing with my fingers. Okay, this is sticking out, but we're just gonna let it. And we're gonna keep a close eye on how this stays throughout the video because a bad brow gel like this will be completely fallen by the end of this video. And we're gonna press that in. That was a good brush through. Press and then let's make it more natural. You do gotta go like that. I know this is not everybody's cup of tea, but it's fun to follow a trend. But don't like get married or anything with your brows done like this because <laughs> you might regret that. In fact, you will regret it. Okay, hopefully my brows stay like this throughout the whole video so that I have a good brow gel to recommend that's affordable. They are uneven, but let me even them out. Oh no, I already feel like this brow is starting to fall down a little bit. Okay, I'm not gonna touch them and we're gonna see. Yeah, it's not holding the stick great. And then to set the face, I'm using this Hard Candy Longwear Setting Spray. I've had some setting sprays lately ruin my makeup, so I hope that this one doesn't. 
I know I do. I want to do this after blush, but we don't have time for that. I'm too excited. Not fragrance free for my fragrance people. It has a fresh scent to it, which I do enjoy. So one of the reasons that I actually decided to film this video is it's been a long time since I've dug into an affordable eyeshadow palette and there's reasons for that. I do not like affordable eyeshadows typically. I'm a little bit of a snob about that, but I had some stuff that I wanted to play with. I'm deciding which matte eyeshadow I want to use. I think we'll use the Milani. I've used this style of palette from them in the past and I liked it. Now this is an all matte one, but I also wanted to try the Catrice because I think I saw Tati. Did she like these? I think we'll go warm though because the eye products I want to use next. I have some um, liquid eyeshadows. I pulled warmer shades. So we'll use the Milani Gilded Mini Eyeshadow Palette in Whiskey Business. This is an all matte palette and normally I can deal with a drugstore matte eyeshadow, but they don't last long. I find that they fade and don't hold their depth which is why I prefer a higher priced eyeshadow palette. But we'll see, I am open to finding the best of the best. And I'm looking at my brows and they have fallen. The nice shape I got out already fell. So fortunately, this product doesn't set very strong. No, like I can press it back down again. Mm, unfortunate. I was hoping it would work, but I'm keeping that spoolie because that spoolie is nice. So I'm just gonna do a simple look. Put a little bit of fallout on that, and I'm using that cream shade to set underneath the brow. I'm going to bring that all the way into this inner corner to brighten up the eye in that area over here. This is a great technique if you harbor a lot of darkness in this area or if your nose protrudes, you're more likely to have shadows. So we just brighten that up, your nose bridge. That's what I meant. And then I'm just gonna see how these colors layer. Since this is a review, I'm gonna use a lot of these shades today. So this has more pigment than I thought. Hopefully it lasts longevity wise. I just have the Catrice True Sit Skin Concealer as my base, which is a little drier, which I like for eyeshadow bases. It's a decent concealer. It's not an all-time favorite of mine, but it's pretty good. And then we're going to build up a little bit with this shade. Okay, not bad. So far, the performance is not upsetting me. I can tell you, though, if this were a Viseart palette, this shade would have gone off on the eyelid in terms of just being really pigmented and super p easy to use. This is easy to use, but it doesn't have the pigment that a higher quality matte eyeshadow would have. But that could make this very good for beginners because you can go in with a heavier hand and you can super blend it out if you mess up. Okay, and then slowly get in a little deeper here. And I'm testing out these deeper shades because I want to see if at the end of the video these still have a lot of depth to them. And this shade is nice. It does have a decent amount of depth to it. Again, a brand like Viseart would do it better. But for the price point, because Viseart can be expensive, this is certainly getting the job done. This is a great like vacation palette because it's pretty small. You have all of the shades that you need, and if it breaks or your luggage, God forbid, gets lost or something happens or it's in your makeup bag being hit around and stuff, if it breaks, it's not the end of the world. I typically don't bring my nicest makeup with me when I travel just in case anything happens. Or if you forget to pack an eyeshadow palette, just run out and grab something like this and you'll have what you need. It actually did okay. It, bl it over blended in my opinion but it did okay. I'm being really picky, but this for an affordable all matte eyeshadow palette, it's performing very, very good for the price point, but too bougie. So I'm using the darkest shade now, and then we're gonna blend it out. Honestly, I'm really happy with the performance of this. I think this was very easy to blend, which is going to make it great for beginners, but 
if you are an eyeshadow snob like me, I know a lot of you have agreed with me that you also are. You know, you get what you pay for with eyeshadows. Does overblend, but most definitely not the worst that I've dealt with. I do think, though, I want to go in with that darkest color again and place it down and not blend it, really, so that the depth can hold. So that's a secret if you really want some depth, especially those of you with deeper complexions on me. It's not that big of a deal. I'm pretty light. But if you do have a deeper complexion, try to blend less and then that depth will show. And then I chose an eye glitter. Well, three. These are from Hard Candy, the Eye Def Metallic Eyeshadows. I just wanted to try a new color because I've used these before. I've tried a pink one and I always thought it was like okay i was never in love with it but i wanted to try a new color because you know when an item has multiple colors sometimes some colors are better than others so i'm going to use this gold one to go with my jewelry i will say hard candy is not one of my favorite affordable brands most of their products are misses for me they have one primer that i love but i'm meh on their products this is a shade champagne it's not really champagne but it's like a gold. I remember when liquid eyeshadows first became popular and the only one that was good was the Stila one. So you had to spend so much money and they would dry out. You can get some good ones at the drugstore now. So I used my finger to blend it out and it did lose a lot of opacity. Though I don't want to blend it out or, and layer it up too much because then if you add too much layers, it can get crusty. But that's pretty. Okay, okay, okay. So what I don't like about this is when you put it on like this, it's gorgeous. But then I use my finger and it loses that base color. And with liquid shadows, we don't want to put on too many layers. But actually that's quite pretty. Put some on the lower part too. So I would say you definitely need two layers to be sufficient with what you see, especially comparing it from here to here, it looks a lot different. This is just not as pigmented, but it gets the job done. For a affordable liquid shadow, right? Not bad, but I am finding as I'm adding uh, each layer, it's kind of pulling off the layers and it's making it look a little uneven, but because it's a reflective can, like finish, it's harder to notice. But up close, off camera, I can see that it is getting a little bit patchy. So I'm gonna use a brush so that I don't pick up too much of the product. I don't know, can you see it's a little patchy there? Okay. I have officially applied too much layers. So I just have to stop while I'm ahead. It looks okay, it's a decent product. Don't expect it to look like it does in here on the eyelid, but it will give you a little glimmer shimmer. Not a bad product, not a great product. And then for eyeliner, I pulled like four because I did not know what direction we were gonna go. Let's go with this CoverGirl one. I feel like brown would be good. So this is the CoverGirl Perfect Point Plus in the shade Toffee Caramel. So these recently have been reformulated. And this is not my first rodeo with this product. I actually think I talked about it a couple speed reviews ago. I used a charcoal one of these and I liked it, but it did fade, especially if I put it on my bare eyelid, it would not last. But it is a decent application. It gets the job done, it smudges the color on there and so for the gray i feel like it was really noticeable how much it faded but i feel like with more natural liner looks with a brown like this it's better to kind of use it in a more smudgy manner so then if it fades it's less noticeable so i'm just doing this to give a little bit of natural definition to the eyes i really like this color but the formula the color is gonna fade but when brown fades it's a lot prettier than when charcoal fades which is what i had so the charcoal looked dirty <laughs> when it faded this one when it fades i think it's going to be a lot more flattering just going to go ahead and put this on my waterline as well it's not going to last too long in the waterline but i do want some added definition down here 
And then when we add the mascara and lashes, that will give me the depth that I want. So we're gonna stop there. And I'm going to try a new mascara, though I'm not going to judge this too hard with it being my first time using it. This is from Maybelline, it's the Curl Bounce Mascara. And it's supposed to give your lashes a curl, which is exactly what I need. And this is from their Colossal line. And I've had really good experiences with their Colossal line in the past. So let's see what the brush looks like. Okay, it's pretty nondescript. A slight curve, but nothing crazy. Huh, this is looking good. For a first time use of mascara, I don't notice a Colossal Curl, but I like how it's coating my lashes. But it is the first use, so this is as wet as it's gonna get, which, it's not good on my lashes, which are very straight and downward pointing, naturally. It's okay on first use. I'm not, like, jumping for joy for how amazing it looks, but I don't dislike it. And that's, that's, that's a positive. Okay, and then let's pop back onto the cheeks because I do want to try these Catrice Air Blush Mattes. They have a lot of colors, and I think we'll use this one caught my eye. The shade Coral Sky. I think it's going to look really pretty with this look. In the past, I really liked some powder blushes that I've tried from Catrice. So hopefully, this will stay vibrant throughout the day so that I can recommend this. Though I will say, uh, the drugstore affordable market does not lack in good blushes. They really do have some nice ones, but this is perfect for that warm summer glow. So if you are a bronzed girl, you love a bronzed look, this shade Coral Sky is very nice. And I can't say too much about it, but looks really nice. I did not pull a powder highlighter, but whatever. I'm gonna pop on some falsies and then we'll go into the lips. For lips, I'm gonna start off with the Catrice Plumping Lip Liner. This is a really good one from the drugstore. It's not new or anything. But I just need to like make it so, so this is the shade License to Kiss. And then ColourPop actually reformulated and redid their Ultra Lip Line. So there's a new formula in the Blotted Lips, the Ultra Glossy Lip, and the Matte Lip. And I just remember the Matte Lip being so soul-suckingly dry. So we are going to try the new formulation of the Ultra Matte Lip. Even though these aren't quite my jam, we're going to try it. So this is the shade Beeper. This is a classic shade. And the packaging looks nice, very sleek. A lot more expensive than some of their packaging in the past. Okay, so let's see. This was like the nude lip for 2018. It definitely has a thinner feel than how they felt back in the day. It's been a while since I've used this formula. It's definitely matte and I could use a gloss over top, but that's because I just have wrinkly lips. Um, meh, they do feel lighter. They're a matte lip. I do think that they are improved if that's what you're into. So everything definitely pulled together. I feel like my makeup looks very, very nice. Up close, it's a little powdery. You can tell I used a lot of powders. But here are the standouts. I really enjoyed the L'Oreal Lumi Glotion. The hype was real, as well as the L'Oreal True Match Nude Foundation. Again, hype was real on that. Also, am feeling quite confident and happy with the Catrice Under Eye Brightener. Um, and then, I think these Physicians Formula Butter Glow Press Powders, they have potential. I'm not sure yet. I definitely want to use these with different products and in different scenarios, but could be nice. Also, killer day for Catrice. Enjoyed the Air Blush Glows, particularly the shade I used. I'm just hoping that they last a long time. The fail, though from Catrice also. This is the one that didn't work. The brow fix, you can see my brows did not hold up for 20 minutes. So that's a pass for me. Not horrible, but just kind of useless for me. I like this Milani eyeshadow. Hopefully it has some longevity today because it was very easy to use. 
I've decided I'm just going to declutter the rest of the unopened colors that I have for these, give them away, because they're not for me. I can see them starting to look crunchy, and I just have liquid shadows that perform a lot better than this. So yeah, I um, guess the job done. You can see the glimmer, but it's just not as nice as a lot of other products that I have in my collection. And actually, I really enjoyed this Colossal Curl Bounce. Doesn't really curl my lashes, but I added a second coat off camera, and look! My lower lashes look good, so I do like this. Maybelline has some good mascaras, as does L'Oreal, by the way. The CoverGirl liner is nice. It will fade down, just knowing from the formula, but it got the job done in terms of brown. I definitely like the brown a lot more. And the Ultra Lip Matte Lip from ColourPop, she's still quite dry. Very, very thin, but I probably wouldn't wear this alone unless I legitimately just needed a color to last on my lips. For whatever reason like look at that that's great so if i have like a long-term event that this is necessary sure but she's still a little drying so yeah anyways full face of new drugstore makeup for me and overall i am quite happy with the look the products did pull together really really well so if you've tried any of these products be sure to comment down below your thoughts on them and i will catch you guys in the next one bye guys have a good one